Uh, hi all. Uh, today we have Aditya Madkekar. Aditya is a dear friend of uh, mine, a childhood friend of mine to be frank and uh, yeah, he should be here any moment. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for joining us and uh, we are only trying to uh, you know share some share along with you guys. Hope it will be useful. So we have Aditya <laughs> Hi Aditya. Hi Kiran. How are you? Good, good, good. Good I'm, to see you. How are you? Doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Same. Here. Hope you are. I'm doing good too. Thank you. How, how are things I'm, in the uh, lockdown? Things are good. Uh, we just had a small shower. We've been in Pune here. Wow. So yeah, we are not out there to enjoy the shower. Right. <laughs> so but. <laughs> I mean, we we got to take the positives uh, from this situation, right? And I think there are a lot of positive things. We are getting to stay home, right? Spend enough time with family, uh, see what what we could do better in the coming months, right? And much needed rest. I think all of us needed rest. In our absolutely, lives. absolutely. Yeah. Right. So uh, le- we won't waste time, Aditya. Let's let's yeah. start. Uh, so first, yeah. I would like to introduce. Uh, you all I, i would like to introduce aditya aditya is a uh, as you all know he was a national rank player he was in the top 10 of the men's as well i i, I think from under 14 till the men's he was top 10 and uh, one of the one of the you know highly ranked players uh, from india he's also been his highest rank was about 556 but you know clicking that is something uh, huge in those uh, back in those days and uh, he's also an itf level 2 tennis coach uh, and uh, then he also uh, uh, along with rahil and all they used to run uh, tennis excellence together arjun gautam alan moses uh, you know of course uh, kefi as well and now he's also uh, now he's running he and kefi are running uh, tennis excellence together and uh, apart from that he was also the director coaching for uh, uh punawala uh, uh, adar punawala maharashtra mm-hmm. tennis foundation and uh, he's now the executive director for sport square private limited which is uh, the pan india distribution uh, distributors for prince and solinko and babolat badminton anything else you right. want to add right. of course he's also be he's also was uh, um, employed with railways and he's won uh, World Railways as well. I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's my job to remind you all. <laughs> so let's start, Aditya. Let's start. How tennis all yeah. happened? You know, I want. We we would love to hear your tennis journey first. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll just brief a little bit about myself. So yeah. uh, you know, I I studied in Hansaraj Muraji Public School, which is the school right next to Prak Tennis. People will know Prak right. Tennis. Yeah. so the school right i i studied there from the first standard so of course there were uh, all the sports in the school so i got to playing by the time i was in second or third standard i got to playing tennis basketball and everything so right. till i was 11 or 12 years old i was playing uh, team sport more than individual sport so i was still playing maybe multi sport maybe five sports till i was 12 years old wow and i didn't play lot of tournaments in under 10 and under 12 back then we didn't have a national under 12 circuit i mean right. it used to right. start in uh, under 14 itself right so i mean there were some players who start playing at 10 years of age some who started 12 13 14 you know it depended right. uh but yes the level of competition was high so i think that was also one of the reason because many of us at a very young age we were not very good at winning you know we wouldn't win a lot of matches and automatically the mind will also divert to uh, sports where you feel motivated you win more or you know the challenges are limited right. but i played basketball uh, cricket badminton at the school level right. you know uh, inter school level and then gradually by the time i was 12 I, my parents also you know put me started they, it was time to choose a sport and i ended up choosing right. tennis yeah so when towards the end of my first year under 14 i picked on tennis and uh, Started traveling. I think that's where I've seen a lot of you guys. Yes, of back course. in those days, I think you were, yeah, traveling was much more difficult. So, yeah, uh, and more fun, this, more difficult. Yeah. But we all made yeah. it. Huge, huge qualifying draws. Right, you know, <laughs> and everybody would play every tournament. Right, so, exactly. 
it right. wasn't easy it yeah. wasn't easy at all shriram so, open 256 uh, bro <laughs> <laughs> by the time you get to to the qualies you are wondering you know what's happening right i'm sure the guys who played before that maybe it was you know even harder for them right but, uh, yeah and then uh, like every other player when i was in my 10th standard there was a hiccup thinking whether i should go to tennis or not right. again in my 12th standard i should do college tennis because some of the players who were playing with me at that time like saurav kohli right uh, he ended up you were in the same training program in uh, Uh, MSLT hmm. he was very keen on going to the US because his brother was there right. and of course uh, it was it is one of the best uh, routes to take uh, even to play professional tennis even right. today right and uh, i i just ended up sticking out right you there know, we I have few of our friends there uh, vijay sivach is here yeah. he says people play yeah. pre quali qualies at times <laughs> yes of course <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, tough right. times i would call them the tough times of tennis you know right national level tennis right today i think the national circuit is what is vishnu just spoke about that you know the national right. circuit needs to revive i think all all the right. players back then who played then would say that national right. circuit rahil is here right. hi rahil hello hello everybody uh, i think i have missed i some of my students ex students i think parents they are also joining right my uh, brother you know also joined shreya uh, hello <laughs> so it, it, it's good i think I think we'll have a very good interactive session yes, and yes, hopefully yes, the right question so let me continue uh, then uh, you know i played pro tennis traveled uh, a little bit uh, trained at different places like everybody does but majorly in india financial uh, backing was a huge problem for me right so you know without uh, saying a little bit too much i would say that like many other players i was on my own without any right. funding right um, uh, completely on my own so i had to take to railways at 18 years of age i right. joined railways when i was 18 right and uh, hi rahul hi kafi welcome kafi is my partner we run the aditya kafi tennis academy yes. currently at pune we have yeah. some promising players yes 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 we yeah. come to that so, next next after this yeah yeah so i had to uh, continue i mean join railways early uh, shiv shankar my coach then you know kim's tennis academy yeah shiv shankar father and kim academy. yes yeah so shiv shankar from dubai he was the one who got me to uh, you know joining railways because he knew that it would be easy for me to play tennis unless and until i have a you know some sort of income coming in right and from there on uh, it was training hard i should you know like other, everybody else it was about adjusting traveling playing uh, meeting mm-hmm. the right coaches lot of good people guided me right i would say, you know to be frank i'm also thankful to a lot of people because without any money you wouldn't get training so a lot of people helped me with uh, you know giving me uh, coaching without me paying so you know wow. it was time and again it was helpful right definitely so it was, it was good i mean you know lot of lot of uh, positives i would say right. you know a shoulder and a back injury uh, you know kept a gave a halt to my career in 2009 right. i had to make a choice also we were undergoing some uh, again with the general problem financial issues so right because of that we couldn't uh, we couldn't continue tennis because your partner and then also here <laughs> your railway <wireless> partner yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes yes, yes. You, welcome yeah. my coach faisal ansari is also here the yes, assistant coach yes. at up yeah so then me and arjun gautam we used to travel together quite a bit and we had this idea arjun was almost you know already into coaching by then so by 2009 we had this idea and we started uh, an academy where we wanted to do the right things and make sure that you know the right infrastructures develop for players to train competitive right. players junior players so uh, we in fact at, when we started we had me arjun <laughs> alon moses uh, yeah. rahel makaria yeah huh? and we also had sitel for some time with us sitel oh wow sitel was there he was training helping us out and uh, you know we ran this place in hendu in uh, which became sack sports later on yeah right so five court uh, out there five and another side court from there we you know we started tennis excellence kafi joined us sometime that year so five of us we ran tennis excellence for five years in between arjun of course uh, he had other goals so he moved right. on but overall i would say for my coaching career the platform that i got early on you know it's not it's not easy uh, because none of us uh, you know except arjun his father was uh, right. in, in coaching but none of us had a coaching background per se right so getting into it you know we got to work with the right people and right. i think the right way helped me develop the right ethics right. and the right mentality to go forward right and right. you know 
uh, of course there are a lot of you know help that i got from all my peers back then right a lot of people still told me that you should be continue playing but you know yeah. all in all i continued playing in the national circuit till i was 27 28 i was still in the railways for some time yes uh, yeah. so coaching was still 70% and playing was 30% but then finally i decided to call it a day and 2014 uh, me and kafi moved to pune and we started uh, aditya kafi tennis academy under tennis excellence only right we set up a residential program here and which we were not able to do in mumbai right and all in all yeah it's, it's been a great ride it's it's going on very well right so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah and you have quite a lot of uh, promising tennis players in india who are doing well from the age groups of under 12 to the men yeah. and women yeah Yeah. Can yeah. You, so, uh, take tell us me. through that. I'll tell you. So, uh, when I started coaching, my first player was Aryan Govias uh, okay. in Mumbai. Right. That's I, I would leave out Bangalore as because Arjun was heading that program and I was still playing at that time. Right. But we were working with all the players, but Arjun was the chief coach there. Right. When we moved to Mumbai, uh, me, Alon, and Rahil, we started the training, and Kathy was with us. So, uh, Aryan Govias is still, you know, today he's still with me. I think. Right. That's a remarkable achievement for him. Yes, to, exactly. To, you know, be with me for eleven years, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Not my achievement. I think it's the players' achievement that they can stick with a coach for that long. Right. And Very I few players say, in India. One of them is Vishnu Ardhan. Vishnu is still with yeah, uh, Nagarjun after so many after twenty yeah. years, maybe more than twenty years now. Twenty-five. Yeah. Twenty-five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing. So, um, yeah. So yeah, well, Anand uh, as well. Here, hi, Anand. <laughs> Anand is here. Anand is here. <laughs> Anand, Anand is the sample sir, sample section. Yeah, yeah. Anand today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So going forward, I would say uh, yeah. Arjun Govind was the first student, but yeah, along the way, uh, we had uh, we have had Dhruv Sunish, who has right. again been India number one in the juniors. Had a good right. transition, hundred on ITM. Right. Now about eight nine hundred on ATP. Arjun Govind is eight hundred on ATP. His best rank was six seventy nine. Right. uh i had i have uh, sahil gaware and uh, i had kunal wazirani who's just into uh, coaching now he's coaching with alon in bombay oh wow but uh, jayesh pulia yeah yeah a uh, lot of players uh, who have stuck with nisharanya gaware she's been with him for 7 yeah, years yeah she's now. been doing well on the junior circuit and she's just trans- mm-hmm. she's just uh, moving in the transition period i guess to graduate yeah, into right. the women well, right This player called Gunjan Jadhav, he's from Mumbai. So yeah. uh, we have had a lot of players. And in between, when I was with the Mar Tennis Foundation, yeah. I uh, also trained Manas Damle. He's one of the right. promising under 12, uh, first year under 14 players, and uh, many others, many other juniors. You know, Arnav right. Papalka. So for one year, I was working with them. Right. Uh, so yeah, lot of lot of good players, I would say, and more will come in the future. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Yes. Of course. Of course. Hey, uh, let's 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 start off our thing. I think uh, uh, yeah. you have worked a lot with under twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen players. You know, just before uh, yeah. uh, we get into the graduation from junior to the pro circuit, uh, you know, how? Just tell us how you work. You know, what 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 do you what do you see in a uh, player, and you know, how do you work on those players? Quite a lot of coaches yeah. here. Yeah. I think uh, it'll be a very good input for everyone. So, so let me be frank. I think we all are good coaches. We all work extremely hard. Right. Okay. Everybody's philosophy is different. At the end, all of us want the players to be the best. You know. Right. Right. The the way uh, me and Kafi do it right now is when the player comes in, we have a brief chat with the parent and the player. We first understand the background of the player. Right. Uh, then we get them on the court. We we see them. We see how they are doing. How they play for an hour. Right. We we let them do one day of training at our place. Right. Once they have done, then we speak further and we recommend them. Uh, depending on their plan, some of them have come for a trial. Some of them have moved, are moving in the process of moving academy. So depending on that, we tell them that maybe you could be here for a week or two weeks and then or a month, and then we understand whether we can train the child, whether they can be comfortable there, right. because there is no improvement coming without sustenance. Right. And uh, all the players, parents, coaches, including me, out there. The more time that the player spends with the coach, right. the more the coach can help the player. Right. And the more the you know, player can relate with the coach right. and understand and know and communicate what he thinks. Because see, the it's a simple process. 
you want uh, you would want to see the player for four weeks you train the player after the player come you send him for two tournaments you would have worked on his game a little bit right and then once two tournaments finish he comes back he gives you a feedback right so it's not necessary he would have been able to implement or rather you would know after six weeks two tournaments and four weeks of training where he is what's the starting point right then you work again with the kids of four weeks of practice and two tournaments four weeks of practice two tournaments and when you do it two or three times you will know the plan you need to make right for that player right and then you can do some kind of goal setting you know what i mean so three right, to right, four correct. months just just you know just yeah. now yeah three to four months is just like you know you're you're looking at the player you're trying to understand him what situations yeah. you know put him into situations and all yeah. that right correct go yeah, ahead go sure ahead you have been around the coaching industry you have coached in malaysia you have been right. uh, in india out right everywhere yeah. you know uh, the same amount of time that it it requires and and you know many a times uh, you you can say that once you formulate with you 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 right work together and then things move forward right. many exactly. a times after that comes a point break where it works or it doesn't work right you know right. and then, then that's the choice that comes in and this is for not, i'm i'm talking about a player who comes in at probably 15 or 16 right. but for a player who comes in at 10 11 12 you have more time right uh the player comes in with more time the player comes in with coming in with a thought that i am going to stick with this for the next three years right and you need to have a different plan for that because of course uh, without getting too deep into it i'll say that for the juniors it is more about technical training trying to improvise on their techniques and their movement and you know when i say technique it's all all around technique right okay and including the physical part and when i say uh, over 14 15 they have lesser time because the choice for professional tennis or the choice for even to go for college tennis will be near so right. you don't have as much time you go to you got to get them into that competitive zone right so transition uh the entire game of transition which we would say that when the player hits puberty right. and above that okay. 13 and high right. depending on a girl or a boy right uh you would say that the entire transition up to 18 would be one phase and that also you could break it up to 15 and then from you know where the 10th standard comes in and then right. you have a difficult 6 8 months and then again, another 2 years right so those 5 years can be broken into 2 1 2 and then after 18 it's it's it depends you know the guidance it changes completely absolutely now um, let me tell you for players who are 13 12 13 we put them first on a two hour tennis and rather one session tennis and one session fitness right and maybe a an individual session uh, if it's absolutely necessary that is if there's a major change otherwise most of the time our program takes care of the things within the within the scheme of group coaching right uh as the player grows older yeah. we increase the session by one uh, a tennis session and we also increase the fitness session right depending on when they are going to compete and depending on when is their off season right it is important for us to know that 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 comes under uh, periodization you know right. period i don't think we'll be that uh, sorry yeah. we missed that uh, uh, you know. Uh, I don't periodization. I don't think we'll touch the periodization. Yeah, we won't. We won't do that. We will. We won't do that. It it yeah. is customized. So <laughs> let's keep yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we do. Sometimes we do one and a half hour session for the seniors in the morning. Yeah. Uh, after the one and a half hour fitness session. Right. So that three hours, then we come back for one hour of tennis and one and a half hour fitness. Uh, one and a half hour fitness in the afternoon. So right. They do about five to six hours, broken down, more intensive. Right. You know. Um, over the years we have experimented i wouldn't say we have not experimented between having one long session in fitness and having two short sessions right and you know you know how it is you keep Absolutely. learning you yes. sometimes feel this is yeah. right that is right everything is trial and error you know? absolutely everything right is now, yeah the sport is evolving you right. know we got to keep up with time we, yeah it's it's really evolving it's a lot <laughs> yes yes yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, and just just so I, yeah yeah go ahead go ahead you 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 go ahead you no no, no. Just, i just wanted because see there there is always been a myth in uh, you know in india especially not i won't say india but i would say everywhere uh, you know sri lanka yeah. malaysia you know indonesia yeah. then um, you know little bit of philippines as well as well as uh, thailand yeah. that you know european strain for six hours you been you you've trained in yeah. europe you you been to spain you been to tennis well Uh, played with, um, yeah. uh, with uh, you know uh, Ferrer and uh, all these guys. 
so you know i just want you to break that myth so uh, see <laughs> when you say training for six hours it's an understanding that needs to come in when you talk about european players or when you talk about most players right full time is is 6 hours or 8 hours and now those 6 hours yeah. means throughout the day because you also have a 2 hour or one uh, you know so rest and lunch break right so professional anything professional would be like an office right so you spend 8 hours there yeah but what you do for the you will be amazed in fact i was amazed so i'm you know i'm i'm accepting that yeah that vishal is also here in i vishal yeah vishal yeah so uh, you'll be amazed that what they do in, as integrated part within those 6 to 8 hours is amazing right. even eating right <laughs> even uh, doing mental classes even working on your serve it can be broken down within those 6 hours in 6 right. hours stretching core work uh, core stability which is stationary right. you know rehab whether in the swimming pool whatever everything is mixed Right. match play and the most intensive uh, bucket drills and movements everything is mixed so the they balance europeans balance the amount of load that is put on a player right. in a week right so if we have trained very really hard monday tuesday yeah. okay yeah when they they will take it easy so when as they will take it hours right but it not necessarily six hours of playing intensive tennis right and then thursday and friday yeah. okay again it will be intensive Right. and then Saturday will be light right now see many times i'll tell you how do myths develop yeah myths develop because we generally like to keep our uh, keep the people who we form as a role model right. we tend to follow them right exactly but we don't yeah we many times neglect the amount of time they have spent in that profession right the amount of you know physical levels they have attained so for example i'm just i'm just speaking a top 10 atp player maybe when he was 14 years old for between 14 and 16 maybe he was working very hard on his physical fitness because the coaches saw that he doesn't move as well right. you know yes but yes. but what we see is today, what we see is today him playing a five setter and then going and playing another two and a half hours of tennis absolutely now he is in competition with, yeah his plan allows him that so okay. myths can develop from individual to individual it depends how we want to see it correct see i'll tell you i'll tell you uh, tennis is dynamic tennis is vast right like many other sports so i stick to tennis it's vast yeah there's a lot of material available online you know we live in a we live in a world where google provides everything right people travel getting to places and let me say there are thousands of coaches and millions of players so when when you speak to a different player and i speak to a different drc kiran the viewpoint will be different right. and then every time i have a new viewpoint i would say no what i was doing was wrong and maybe i need to do more i need right. to do more right you know that's where the the issue comes but for me <laughs> if you can keep it intensive if you can sit with your coach and you can formulate a program which keeps you intensive okay right. you have you have banked it because right. that's what people do that's what pro players do they, they agree with their coach right they, and whether the coach is dr chikiran or aditya markekar or alon moses or arjun gautam they agree with the coach right. that this is what i need to do okay and if they do not agree with the coach then the you know the whole thing comes Everything where comes. they right. start feeling it not doing correct yeah correct correct yeah, yeah i think yeah. from there uh, from there let's go to uh, you know like uh, okay a lot of uh, juniors everybody has been tra- everybody talks about transition aditya but then yeah. you know, we we know the uh, difficulties behind uh, the transition right so but yeah. but i think but, but i always thought just like uh, you said you played multi sport right yeah. you know fitness yeah, especially I was, yeah i was lucky to be frank yeah, yeah. you know i think very sport. few of very few of us are lucky you know rail also played cricket you know i played cricket basketball just like uh, i'll tell you early early back we used to get a tennis magazine yeah. right we we didn't have yeah. you know sports star sports star yeah. only used to give us uh, uh, you know uh, a little bit of information uh, so right. most, so what we used to do is you know somebody like uh, alex coreja used to go and play football for yeah. uh, foot footwork right and then yeah. uh, we had sambras yeah. who used to play basketball as well as baseball basketball for yeah. footwork hard court footwork and uh, baseball for hand right. coordination 
like right so how about multi sport want you to so so i'll tell you, you even multi-sport? while uh, what is that do you suggest multi sport go again i would say that when you are a professional right okay five days of playing one sport and sometimes for you know adding in your physical fitness as a part of your regime or relaxation right. playing another sport helps people play water polo right people tennis players play water polo you know yeah. they, they will swim a little bit they play water polo right uh, they will play soccer if it's a part of a fitness uh, you know fitness schedule just for fun but soccer if you play full field we all know how how it right <laughs> exactly uh, again, you know, again i enjoyed playing cricket also yeah. uh, like you know but but majorly we would play cricket you know where it's where it's just one on one or maybe two on two on right. one so you have a lot right. of running to you know right i'm not talking about cricket on the field where uh, <laughs> So he's missing our football session, <laughs> Sitan. Nice I wouldn't say where is the full field where you are not, you know. But but again, from a younger age, I would suggest parents. Yeah. Up to twelve years, eleven or twelve, keep it multi sport. Right. Because you see, you can't do any everything with fitness. It's like saying that Aditya, eat the same diet for ten years and you'll be strong at eighty. If my parent tells me that when I'm eight years old, I cannot eat the same absolutely, diet. Absolutely, absolutely. i need to change and the right. change actually helps and when you have a multifaceted approach trust me you would work on things which you know you you wouldn't even imagine like you know the if you play a striker in football okay right. you play the role of a striker you would develop a very very good first step right you know right. and first step is very important when it comes to tennis you see right. the if you see tennis team uh, yesterday today they have been showing nadal's best points you know they have been saying 71% of the ocean is water and then right. on clay there's not all there's not all exactly <laughs> yeah yeah like you see that they are focusing so much on the forward backward movement right which comes when you know in tennis if you see most of us tennis is more lateral it's moving along the baseline not so much happen moving front and back at a younger age right so when you play different sports your agility quotient and your explosion quotient develops enormously right and playing a team sport you know what i developed the most was uh, uh your uh, how do i put it your understanding in terms of your game understanding right so in a team sport you need to do a lot more and you need to manage a lot more with people okay exactly it's exactly. like managing is the right to word <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it teaches you how to manage people which is a right. very important skill even in uh, even in tennis whether you right. whether you manage your coaches your team as a player you manage your parents you manage your fans you manage uh, players from other academies so on and so forth right so yeah i mean multi sport definitely go in for multi sport right and keep even when you playing professional do once a week or once a month or whenever you are in town try right. to play another sport but keep it to make sure the injuries don't set in yes, like yes, if yes. don't play pro soccer right yeah right right that so super and uh, i think i think uh, yeah uh, so my question is from multi sport and how what uh, amazing mental toughness what kind of mental so, toughness so, do you think i'll add one more thing in transition i'll add one more thing in transition before we go on to the mental right toughness. right so in transition i'll tell you one of the biggest challenges that i felt coaches like me and everyone and the player spaces when do you increase the number of tournaments when do you feel you are ready right. whether you should go for college tennis right okay? right look let me put this a uh, little bit in this is completely my thinking yes, and yes. i have changed my thinking yes. in 10 years many times this is this is your show you are the you are the chief guest here you can talk anything you want <laughs> <laughs> what i mean is that uh, being ready being ready for the player right for the player seeing that i want to play pro tennis whether the player is good or not good, okay is sometimes game enough for you to train the player for professional tennis when he's right. 17 or 18 and he right. says no you it is not the path he's discussed right. with his parents right he says no i want to give a shot playing professional tennis right you know that he is ready to play pro, pro tennis now whether he maximizes his potential is another story which the coach and the player will right now ideally if you see the itf book also the number of matches to be played at different age is there yeah right But following that following that blindly like it's based by the time you are 18 and above you should play 80 to 120 matches right but 
it's not easy to get that if you do not meet the ranking potentials right so transition for junior itf i would say it's easier because entering grade 5 itfs you build your national ranking correct and most coaches should focus on that when the child is 13 yeah you know i know that many of the established coaches are already doing that when i mean most coaches i mean those coaches who have still not worked with these kind of players or right. have players who are going to reach that level going forward right. so junior itf is the first stepping stone and many uh, you know for me more often than not many of my players have given me an answer while playing junior itf about what their future plan is going so that you know whether you are ready or not right. you know you will know you will know right. for sure there's no it's not a guessing game the right. guessing game right. doesn't work all time. absolutely it's on the player with the player yeah exactly yeah i think uh, just like you mentioned you know that's uh, one which is very important itf also gives you the rules after your 13th birthday you can play uh, the itf juniors and after your uh, your you have completed your 14 under 14 you can directly move to the you know men's and women's yeah right that yeah uh yeah you were saying the mental, mental side tough. of it. you know how about mental tough because most of the kids have most of the players today in india you can actually see that you know they have so many questions unanswered right so uh when you categorize mental toughness okay let me let me add some i will uh, i will tell you In fact, when we started tennis excellence, our goal was to keep the technical and tactical, and the physical. Okay, let's say the technical and tactical through the tennis coaches, the physical through the fitness coaches. Right. But with the tennis coach, the we we had mental training. Which both Arjun, me, Alon, Rahel, we all agreed. Right. Yeah, we we all agreed that you know mental training is an integral part. Right. Because you know. when the child enters the tennis court on day 1 whether he's 6 7 8 9 right. when he's 6 the parental mentality and what they expect is actually formed on that day right when the child is 12 or 13 years old they need to know exactly what they are going to see they need to know the concepts of how to think right. and how to think is an art to so mental toughness you know as coaches even i make the mistake i tell them over oh, this is so easy oh you know how come you're struggling with this right you know if you can't do this you can play pro tennis if you can't do you know at many times it's because they have not gone through a specialist right see i i wouldn't say i i don't want to take names of sports but when i you know being in touch with different different sports i see that the the coach is supreme the right. coach is a part of the tennis right the sport or the other the technical and tactical the coach is a part of the fitness the coach is a part of the mental and the coach is a part of the nutrition as well. right but not all coaches can take part, take charge of everything correct so mental toughness and the mental side of the sport you know you need to you need to really know to what level you need to attain this and i would recommend that every academy works with one with the players especially players who are between 10 to 14 years of age right. because trust me i have done this activity with i mean this experience i have tried to get this experience with players who are 11 12 and at 14 they just know how to think whether they become india number 1 or not you know if if you are thinking that mentally being mentally tough is material enough to be india number 1 to be itf top 10 to play the junior grand slam it's not because tennis is very technical Absolutely. the talent element that is the talent when i say talent it also means the tactical execution the right. mind to execute right to hold the racket everything you know that quotient is still very high but what mental toughness does is or rather uh, you can say the psychological uh, uh, growth of a player the psychological ability of a player what it does it allows him to n- know the factor of how to self motivate how to form routines right how to undertake goal setting right you know right what is goal setting the goal setting we, we you know tennis coaches give them a sheet i give them a sheet and i tell them uh, you know okay you got to put in your 90% today but what is 90% how do you get to 90% right how do you think you know what what exactly is uh, you can say you know some of the concepts that are there like how can i maximize my ranking right how can i reach this particular level these are things which which can be told you know to a player by a professional which actually helps i'm telling you because you know we 
when we when we go to a to a doctor and uh, many a times if the compounder tells us are aapko ye hua hai ye ye dawa aapko doctor dega lekin fir bhi hum log doctor ko right correct correct you know that the compounder you know sometimes <laughs> and then we say ha ha usko aata hai but we will never go to the compounder we will right. always go to the doctor right and that right. is important we are the doctor for technical and tactical and you know we should also uh, guide the players for that Right. Simple activities are okay. I mean, where the players, not every player will require mental training for once a week. They will require probably once in three months. Exactly. Okay. But, but uh, I would say, okay. Let me get to the other part now. Yes. How does uh, you know playing? How does pressure, anxiety, these aspects that come in? How do players? How much of importance is that for the player? Those who are competing less today, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. or those who are competing more today, both of them will know that. the pressure keeps mounting and the pressure mounts without notice right so for example diyas when i was going to do this session with you i was anxious you knew it <laughs> i sent you a message at 4 yeah exactly when i sent you a message at, yeah from 4:50 to 5 o'clock trust me i was sitting and i was preparing right why because for me it's a match for me <laughs> exactly. because i did tennis for 25 years in my life exactly or 30 years 20 years in my life for me it's like you know i need to do it well right and many times the players want to do everything to the best of their ability right they want to do it and it is a player you right. know many times even i put down a player or you know you as a coach or many coaches will put down a player but we know that the player only wants to improve right but these players anxiety uh, handling pressure knowing their routines emotional control they get angry they throw rackets they come out of the court we tell them uh, you know don't do that next time but why that happened how did the mercury reach a you know 105 degrees right. in their mind no one knows about that right. you know that's something which i feel all the players need to need to capture it and this is the time right. covid for me what have i told aryan govias what have i told dhu sunesh <laughs> is this is the time where you can write down 20 20 matches and create a trend of why at that four all thirty all this happened. Right. Why at five six I cannot break the opponent and I it goes into a tiebreaker. Right. Player okay. every player has a different problem. Why I cannot get up in the morning at six o'clock even right. though the session for the last ten years has been at seven o'clock. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not just the winning. It's not just the winning. The the mental toughness. Okay. Like. it's about being mentally tough when you can get in there every day six days a week and telling yourself that i have put in my 100% that is that builds mental toughness right because when you know that you have put in your best for every practice session when right. you land up in the match you will be anxious right but your execution of your training will come in right there it will come in there is no it may not come in for the first two games or four games but it will come definitely it will come for sure for sure for sure and uh, most of the most of the players who keep telling me you know i think uh, you can uh, you can also uh, give a you know at the end of the match when they are actually losing the match you know that's when they realize yeah. that uh, maybe the last couple of points or uh, you know uh, or something last point uh, as well you know they think okay if i would have done this maybe the the score would have been different because last point yeah. for sure in tennis you cannot do it you need to be a pete sampras and with those serve Absolutely. if it is on your serve then something would have happened but most of the cases are that last moment everybody comes up and says sir i would i should have done this yes that's not in the last point <laughs> i think you should think that right just take us yeah through. let me let me let me uh, tell you this why that happens in the, in any match there are certain trigger points right after the match when we tell the player to write down about the match right they remember they, they remember only those points which they think have mattered the most right and as coaches i feel we all should focus on those points right we should respect that they don't particular point right yeah they, they don't remember the 25 winners they have but what made them lose according to them is right. very very important and sometimes right. sometimes Trust me, players will look for those particular moments. They will, they, the car, their their mind will come to that point, or they know that they're going to reach that point. Right. And then they will always be waiting for that point. Right. So when 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 we take the players to practice session, sorry, 
when we take the players to practice sessions where we involve them yeah many a times they through the session every point and every ball that they have so if i speak to right. uh, let's say you are my student and yeah. let's say i mean i'm just taking an example i should be your student actually come on <laughs> stop kidding stop so, kidding no joke let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's say you are my student and i tell you kiran we are going to work on the back end down the line next 20 balls right after every the ball four balls i want you to feel the intensity i want you to feel i want you to in, increase your intensity hit the ball in different angles right you know take them through the session like that right chances are that in the match they will understand the trends better right. every time they sit down in between the break yeah they will know what is happening to the match right. and then the pinpointing of the last bit right. okay they will right. not reach the last bit. the match will be over before that because right. many a times when i'm running a race Okay, let's say tennis is about running a race, right? And I think that someone has overtaken me in the last hundred meters, right? That's because till the last hundred meters, my mind wasn't thinking about winning the race, right? My mind was about thinking the you know end end uh, point. It's right. about finishing the race, right? I'm not thinking always about winning. So in close matches, you know, those trigger points are also important, right? Very have you have right. you uh, over? Yeah, have you reached the stage where sometimes uh, players play seven six third with the player, they lose to the player, and the next time they beat them six two six two, right? Because they have gone through everything that has happened, and some players have this ability. Trust me, some players have this ability to know what happened when they lost. Right. They analyze the match. They right. sit and watch the matches if it's recorded, and right. they, you know, it, it's a lot of effort. Like I said, it's a lot of effort. right so mentally yes it comes into play right and mentally i would put in one uh, i would sum it up by the mental part by saying one thing is that uh, everything is mental you know right. today why everybody is talking about mental 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 is because what is technical training making the child understand the child will right. understand if the child has the right mind. right what is tactical hitting the ball in different angles hitting the ball away right. from the player the child will understand if he has the right mind right so everywhere the common point is the mind the, right exactly so mind yeah mind is the mental so if i do any activity let's say i want to get up the chair i'm sitting and walk there i first use my mental attitude right. i make a decision right which is why the mind is so important right everything starts mentally with the thought and if you can channelize the thought yeah, yeah. your mood your mood yeah the one question from dhanashri Hi, both of you. How yeah, are you? Hi, Aditya. Yeah. I would like to know, as a coach, what would you suggest the players for this phase, considering the pressure to survive will increase right after this pandemic. Uh, if you if you are talking about professional players, I suppose yeah. you are talking about yeah. pro players. Yeah. Look, I think many of the pro players right now, as I speak, have have uh, have accepted the situation. Yes. I think the first ten days was very hard across all sports. They have Right. right now, accepted the situation. Right. You know, everybody has started working towards a goal, though no one knows a clear goal. Right. I think 13th of July is still the ITF and the ATP WT are closed. 13th of July, and I think move to 8th August. Of... I guess, if I'm not wrong. Oh, it's it's extended. Yeah. Oh, I, I have not seen that. Yeah. Okay. Is... Okay. Let's say let's say end of July or early yeah. August. Yeah. So it gives them a lot of time to work on their. shortcomings or i won't say not coming even working on their strength and making it better right yes the pressure to survive will be there but the pressure to survive will be for everybody imagine a player who was losing first down first down first down for the last 10 weeks i think he he will be a little happy because everybody is on a break absolutely <laughs> absolutely Suddenly, everybody has to restart yeah yeah so i think there are injured players you know i think the the major issue the hit that has happened is the earning right because everybody the moment they spend the money like any business you know they go to the tournament they spend money they right. they earn the money they earn the points they improve their ranking right so that pressure it's there but when out of 7 billion people you know that at least 5 billion of them are facing this today right exactly. in an intensive way we all need to we all need to not not focus on that we need to focus on ourselves and improvise on what we need to right. the pressure will always be there we can put it that way Correct. Whether it's now or whether it was three months ago, right? Whether COVID or no COVID, you know, <laughs> there's always pressure. Right, right. 
right i think uh, yeah tanish is uh, he's answered your question yes so we continue yeah. from there then we have sujay our yeah. old friend sujay biggest obstacle now is too much info and distraction for players due to social media and mobile how do pros like aryan goes and mukun deal or oh, they are yeah. most of the so, time they uh, are on the phone trying to figure yeah, out okay do. they are trying to make memes out of this out of all these uh, exactly. you know things you know, <laughs> exactly how, i don't know you know aryan does i don't know what I aryan does but i know what mukun does <laughs> yeah. no, i'll actually answer this question for right. him i think uh, sujay would also mean about junior players and i think this right. hazard has been facing with a lot of us who got trained in the 90s right early 90s before that and maybe up to the early 2000s till everybody didn't have a mobile yeah. today trust me it's we, we need to accept it somewhere right and we need to live it the thing. so the world health organization uh, you can read this up sujay the world health organization has given a certain stipulated time for right. a, amount of screen time that a person can utilize for having a healthy living right but today that has been surpassed massively because the need of the hour is also you know social media if it can be negative it can also be positive right because brand building is happening in a positive uh, through social media most of the company most of the players at least in sport you know it's a time where they can make themselves available to uh, the world so i mean they must be doing a little bit more of social media right now but it it can it, it's something which which is differs from player to player so as a coach i think as coaches rather we would uh, tell them what is the best for them at the end the right. certain decisions and independence of the players is is the key is important right. the parental influence also matters a lot in this parent right. to work hand in hand with the coach okay and we just have to you know keep on keep on telling them what is right right those like arvin guruji and mukund they have it figured out yeah so we i don't think we we can we can really comment on them absolutely you know, uh, i think they are very mature to manage themselves at this point right 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 we have one more and uh, that's uh, kunal what would you like to say kunal about Rudy. tournament uh, tournament planning after the pandemic considering traveling outside india how does a player plan his tournaments okay so once the circuit starts i think uh, i think uh, kiran will get a guy like mukund or uh, pura raja or jeevan or someone <laughs> who are continuously going to travel in the circuit is to <laughs> right but, but let me put it this way that planning the tournament before the pandemic was also very very hard right okay the, um, before all this lockdown and everything the pandemic was spreading and people were still traveling right. so it's a very very individual situation right. as coaches if if i was x y z player wanted to start the pro circuit again and he wants to travel i would tell them look these are the tournaments these are the options right let's weigh out all the options that are available to us Right. and let us see how important it is right i think again this this question is from player to player at that particular point if the priority is health for the player right okay and they would you know i can wait for another four weeks before i start right then they would wait for another. but i think the better better thing for india is to do is host more tournaments so right. the traveling gets right. eliminated at right. least for those who are playing the 15000 right yeah yeah i think take it easy i would say take it easy Uh, yeah. don't rush into the tournament right. because when a player out of tournament for that long it can also mean that when they get back okay they they lose too many matches right so they need to have uh, uh, what do you say a slightly simpler approach and take it day by day right. see how fit they feel uh, even though many of them will be training 100% right now right but are they really 100% have they been self motivated over the next 3 months 4 months we won so i think take it take it player by player that's what i would say correct correct and uh, just to add on you know usually you know people have some psychological problems in the sense uh, you know to not start a tournament if you are sitting at home either you are uh, injured or you are having exam right. or something or some 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 issue but here is not the case the case is absolutely right. you are absolutely fit you are absolutely doing but it's just that you cannot get on the court and start playing so i think uh, right. that also matters uh, a bit uh, psychologically because yeah. to get back into that uh, game because 
the last session the the player will only remember the last session which he played which is about you know right. four weeks ago and he wants to do the same way the first day i mean not all the pros you know but usually all the junior juniors will obviously want to play the same way on the first day right correct which is, like, which we, they'll be disappointed for you know because one might work one might not work you know and all that stuff so i think uh, it's a very good question bro it's right. a fantastic question kunal right. nice it is, it is kunal it is. Uh, one year into his coaching career and he's doing a lot of good work with alon in bombay they are practitioners so yes. great job kunal all the best good luck good luck kunal right so uh, we, can, what else? we are we are getting into the last 5 minutes and i think this session mm-hmm. has to be extended can we do yeah. another session tomorrow yeah we can we can do another session at yep. this time i get at this time right okay. we can decide the time and we will i think post it tomorrow day after whenever we right. can we can do a session right right but uh, i think um, go ahead you yeah there's one more question sir how to overcome hmm. a player's depression if he's losing matches continuously if he's losing matches continuously even after is giving 100% in right. all can okay. you please explain yeah so i'll i'll get to this see yeah. giving 100% would mean that you are training your body and your personality to do your best in no matter what you let me put it that way and many a time many of my students you know it's been 10 years now so 10 years ago i started training students who were 17 18 and many of them are you know doing very well in their life because they know right. how to give their 100 right now let me do this tennis specific you need to sit with your coach and with your if you have a mental trainer sit with your mental trainer sometimes jointly with the coach mental trainer parent and yourself right. and right. try and get out of this situation right maybe taking a break from the from the tournaments can sometimes work reformulating your plan sometimes we are you know uh, thinking that we want to win tournaments we go to a tournament we want to win the tournament So maybe having a shorter goal, like winning one match at a time, can work better. Right. If you have lost four first rounds in the fifth, and you have that you are the top seed, or you are the you know let's say top eight seed, ideally you cannot go into the fifth tournament thinking that I am going to win the fifth round, right? Because then you are just repeating the same mistake. So you would rather think about taking it match by match. And the question you have asked <laughs> is, you know. uh for every player i'm telling you losing to every player don't look at the top 4 top 6 but you look at many of the other players and you look at the trends how many matches they lose or i, I don't have the records of the hand because it's been 4 weeks since right. i'm playing the atp tour <laughs> right but there are so many people who don't win matches right they come off streaks where you know they uh, they have lost 10 matches 10 first rounds 12 first round 15 first round so at you know i i presume you must be playing at a national level so at a national level the planning can be different you can go low to a lower tournament sometimes just to give yourself the confidence you're going to a uh, let's say a ts or a cs or you can't play a ts ps i guess you're going to a let's say a cs 7 you know if you are ranked 17 in the country as against playing a or 18 in the country yeah. as against playing a super series because you want to make a quick jump can right. help you better right so you know sometimes you you just have to keep working giving you 100% is the best thing you can do so keep right. giving you 100% right yeah sure sure that that's i think that's the only thing we can do is keep keep right. keep playing keep playing. and that most of the time i think uh, aditya these uh, these players mm-hmm. most of the players in india with lot of tournaments mm-hmm. which we've seen uh, they tend to forget one simple thing enjoy that's playing a match okay. you're giving your 100% or you're losing a match or uh, you know if you worked hard you know even if you lose a match yeah. see that enjoyment of working you know in your fitness and your mental thing or you know when you're drilling or whatever that move, if that uh, thing is missing enjoyment is missing i think that's again uh, you need to your body and mind mm-hmm. should be able to take that uh, pressure or whatever you know the amount of uh, intensity yeah. which happens yeah. they have you have to enjoy that very true very true, very true. i think you have, you you said you bang the right uh, chord i guess 
इट्स एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट हां हां सीख रहा हूं सीख रहा हूं योर 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 100% परसेंट कम आई थिंक दिस दिस आकांक्षा इज शी आस्किंग क्वेश्चन uh no uh no, no. we have another we have couple of questions before we finish i think uh, one is uh, one is sujay he says ferrer lost six first rounds and in the seventh mm-hmm. tournament beat agassi who was number one yeah maybe he's giving info yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of insights into the coach yeah there's one more samik sport psychology which says a great conversation lot of insights uh, into how coaches think should uh, help sport psychologists yeah that's by the way that's my wife gayatri <laughs> who runs a she and a partner and a sport psychology firm called samiksha right so you know even before i met her you know we were we were working with sport psychologists but after meeting her, i realized it even more than me <laughs> <laughs> right right maybe we should do she should be able to help quite a lot of tennis players across india you know maybe yeah we couldn't if the players couldn't travel to pune uh, maybe even online mm. she could help uh, a lot of tennis players mm. this is actually doing a lot of that she is working wow. uh, rail makaria rail makaria how important question how important is it for players to train abroad we have very good question three minutes. okay i'll quickly i'll right. sum it up in two right. uh, so <laughs> we are one more one more question able to uh, what was the most so challenging situation as a coach there have been many challenges and they continue so we, we can do two things we can do two things because we are running short of time uh, we can have another session on uh, on uh, you know training abroad and uh, some yeah. mental things which we we wanted to discuss yeah yeah we can do that we can do that and uh, yeah and probably about indian tennis and whatever i think we have yes. plans for that as well yeah. so we can do that i think lyle will keep it for the next session yes. if you want what's the most challenging situation as a coach uh i think it was it was you know when players want to want to play professional tennis how to guide them i think even after playing professional tennis the time at which i played mm-hmm. and the time that was six years after that right. or eight years after a lot of changes are happening right. the number of tournaments the the kind of tournament the number of tournaments in india right you know and you know the 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 level of the players so i think choosing the right tournaments was the biggest challenge that came in as me right for for me i think and that continued as i speak what applies to one one person's uh, medicine is another person's poison many times correct correct so as a, you know it's rightly it, said it never applies for people. yeah it never applies for both of them both the players so you need to customize for every most... player yeah yeah and which tournament should i go for which <laughs> right. player should i go <laughs> right. that's the most challenging part one is playing in bombay yeah, one yeah, is yeah. playing in uh, you know maybe calcutta one is playing in delhi one is playing in hyderabad <laughs> right right right, right. So, i think uh, we we got a very good insight right uh, will this session cut immediately after one hour is over yes yes yeah uh, and there's one more session happening with uh, suresh sir and mukund at 6 o'clock correct right so i think that that's an interesting session that everybody should be there right. for as well right, right, right. yeah thanks, thanks everyone thanks for being thank here. you so much uh, aditya thank you yeah we should be we look uh, forward for another session very important session about uh, professional yes. players and uh, the mental toughness and a uh, lot of uh, things which we actually discussed Thank you Perfect. so much for being there. We will surely let you Thank let you. people know when we are going to do our next next session. Yes, yes, surely. Yes. Thanks surely. for all okay. the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.